Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the webinar, Safir Access Control. My name is Ferdi. My colleague, Sebastian, he will assist on the chat. Don't uh, ask him too many technical questions. No, please do, because he will forward uh, questions to me. And um, I will answer. So first of all, I will start with the uh, presentation. I will show you some products. Later on, we go to the um, to the lessons to have a quick overview how it works, and then at the end, I will give a short demonstration of how the um, the the access control uh, central works, how you can create people, how you can upload, how you create groups, and also a little bit about the time attendance. Okay, so let's set start it so in here we have the time attendance um, we have the the black color and the gray color and in various uh, forms with a fingerprint reader or with card reader here is one that has also the option of the pin code a card um, there are also other uh, ways of uh, registering your access that's uh, with face not with this model here we have the controller that you can connect readers push buttons to exit obviously the lock a sensor to know if the um, door is closed or open then we have an auxiliary port for other um, um, devices to activate like a light bulb for example there is a integrated power supply in this model and obviously the IP connection okay here we have a access control system that uh, looks like the time attendance one it's a standalone device also with a relay to open the door so you can um, when you registrate that you're going to work for example it will open the door as well. Okay, here's a little sample how you should um, connect the lock depending on, on the type of lock because this is a magnetic one it should be on the context of a normally closed and not on normally open Here's one that shows you how to uh, connect the sensor and the push to uh, open or exit button. Here we have the uh, time control um, unit that has the IP connection, power supply and uh, an arm output. I don't know why you should use it, but Imagine in one case you need to use it, you know that it's there, that is the option to use. Right, how does it work? Okay, it's you can start very simple, it's like check in, then you work and then check out. We have also other options like break time or lunch time. There are various options that you can choose and select how the device needs to operate. So also, it can be calculated as um, absent and when you have a double shift, for example, like you work in the morning from 9 to 12, like in this image, and then you go out, have your siesta, as we do it here in Spain, <laughs> and then you come back at work at 4 o'clock and you check out at 6 o'clock. Okay, different forms of uh, operations, like um, the method that you selected, then it goes into the device, then you need to collect the data with the Safir Control Center, and you can export the data in PDF, Excel, or in an email. There is even an option to connect it to a, a SQL database. So, uh, what is the advantage of the um, Sephir Control Center? You can control every network 
Safir device, like your camera system, your video intercom, your time management and access control, all in one program. So with the hybrid system, just like I showed you in the, one of the previous slides, you can registrate the time and also let the device open a door. So what type of products do we have? We have controllers that you are able to connect the readers and we have standalone devices. Some standalone devices you can also connect on a controller. These are the types of controllers. You have the controllers for um, two doors and four doors, ones uh, with uh, weekend communi uh, communication or with the RS485 communications. We have the ones with two doors with um, connection for four readers or for two readers. The four door has only the maximum of two, uh, four readers. So if you ha need to have um, control of who's going out and in, you definitely need to have one that can handle two readers for one door. We have also um, the board alone. So for example, if you have a device where you you do not have space or you have one uh, cabinet that you need to install everything, you can order the board as well without the power supply, without the casing, and etc. etc. Okay, what type of readers do we have? Um, we have here a, a single reader that is for EM cards, and that's the 1003. And we have also the same model, but then for outdoor with IP65 certification, we have a vendor proof one, but this one comes only with the MyFair card reader option and is uh, vendor resistant. And we have also one with uh, the pin code. Then there's another one um, as well for the pin code and card reader. And then we have the same model as, again, for the EM card and for outdoor. Then we have also a vandal proof one. We have a fingerprint reader as well, including a card reader. The standalone devices. We have here a standalone device that looks like, uh, like an intercom. You can use it as well as an intercom to call a um, Sapphire monitor from the, from the Sapphire intercom system. And you can uh, use your card to have access. The second one is a very simple standalone access control with um, also a call button and a pin code to use or the EM card. Here we have the uh, biometric standalone devices for time attendance and access control. The last one uh, with the camera, you cannot use the pin code, obviously. <laughs> Let's see. Um, everything also with a with a call button to to call a monitor or you can use the Safir control center to answer the call from the uh, outdoor unit. This is um, the time attendance control unit. Uh, we have models with uh, with a battery, so in case there's a lot of uh, power failures in the in the building, then I highly recommend this one. The battery lasts around four hours and until it dies. And then we have the other one that is in black or in white. Then the standalone devices with uh, face recognition it has a dual camera, so that it will be more secure. You cannot take a picture and then open the door with a picture from somebody else because it is reading your face 3D. 
some of the models you can also use the weekend connection to uh, add this one on the controller you the bigger mono models with a seven inch uh, screen one with fingerprint reader and card reader and the other one only with card reader and face recognition uh, we have some accessories here the housing a power to connect the device on and an additional fingerprint reader for the AC3166. As I mentioned before, we can use the some of the outdoor units together with the Saphir monitors and even a recorder. And via the monitor, you can connect it also on the Saphir Connect app on your mobile device so that you can answer the call or open the door in this case. Access through QR code. So we have the option to download and create a QR code via the Safi Control Center. You put it on front of the camera and then it will read and give you access for um, that uh, door, for example. This could be created also temporarily. But those options you will find in the Safir Control Center. This is another model that you can use. It's very nice. Um, has all, almost all the options. Um, it has a card reader um, and a fingerprint reader, face ID, and QR code. And you can also call a monitor, or even you can use this in in an apartment building you can call several apartments so um coming back to the Safir controls center this is a uh, unique environment because you can add everything together your cameras your um, access control and uh, your video intercom system obviously um, all the applications are for free and downloadable on our support pages or in the App Store or the Google Play Store for your mobile device. What can we do with the Safir Control Center? It can connect up to 64 devices, uh, 3,200 uh, people, and you can create 128 groups. You can connect up to four monitors, and each monitor can display 46 channels live. We can simultaneously add um, 16 channels in, in playback if we use the codec H265 plus access control uh, configuration, user management and the video intercom installations. We can use eMaps um, to have a view of the building of the area that uh, you're monitoring. In those, uh, in the eMap, you can add your uh, doors, you can add your cameras via just a few clicks. You can open a door for somebody that's waiting for a door. Um, the event logs and um, unlimited installation for servers and uh, timetable management uh, for access control uh, for presents and also to receive calls from a um, outdoor unit from your intercom system. Okay, the parts of locks. Okay. We have a nice um, Bluetooth smart lock that you can share with other clients via an application through internet. This doesn't mean that you have direct access um, through the, on, on this device. No, it's a, it's a code that will be shared between users and you um, need to use your phone to have access this lock open and close and for this one you use the um, smart lock application that you can find on google play store or in in the apple app store how does it work it's really easy it just change like it works like the uh, the same way you need to uh, change the lock you install the batteries and you add the device into your application I'm currently working on some videos, uh, how to set it up. So um, I expect this will be online pretty soon as well. 
so here a little demo. What you do is you scan the QR code that is at the back of the plate of the lock. You end the so that the device will be added into the application. And then via your mobile device, you can open or close it. And there is even an action when you shake the phone that it will open the lock. Okay, we have a question. Is it uh, possible to hack this system? I think everything is hackable. Okay, it doesn't matter how smart you are. How easy is it? It's not easy. Okay, it's, it's encrypted. You need to have the key. You need to have the, the, the sharing key and it's, and, it's, and it's hooked up. This device is hooked up to this account. So if you're smart enough to, to hack the account of the user, yes, it should be easy for you. But I think for most people, it will be not possible to hack it. And I didn't receive any notification up to now that it's hackable. Here are some nice pictures that Yolanda wants to share with Luca. Lucas, sorry. So in this case, you do not need internet to open this lock. So in, coming back on, hey, is this easy to hack? In case of direct internet access, no, because there is no internet access. There's only a connection via Bluetooth on your device on the lock. Okay, here again, a little shy, slideshow about um, sharing by email or phone number. And also you can say, hey, there's a time limit. You can only access this lock uh, from from Monday to Friday from 8 till 6 o'clock in the evening. So if you, if you, for example, are a Airbnb host, and you have um, rooms for rent, you can add this device on, on the rooms. Or if you have some apartments for rent, you can use this. Um, what can we do more? We can add a Bluetooth smart relay to activate uh, more more than more than this this lock. We can have a Bluetooth link connecting through the internet with the Bluetooth Wi-Fi link device. Then you can have access via internet as well. But this is an optional uh, if if that's easy for you. Uh, we can add a Bluetooth keypad to have access via a code, for example, for kids. If the kids need to enter the house, they can use this keypad. And a Bluetooth fingerprint reader. We can use this one as well. It's, it's very convenient. So again, for kids. Or temporary access for friends or maybe for the mailman that needs to deliver something. Other devices that we can add on, on our uh, access control devices, controllers, is um, QR code uh, readers. We have uh, QR code readers that works with Wigand 26 and 34 that are suitable for our uh, controllers. We have the one for MyFair and for EM. Nice option for um, apartment complexes or garages on on, on offices um, to have a UA, UHF reader that you can connect up to uh, our controllers. We have the UF tags that you can stick behind the window of a car. The the readers we have from six meters and from twenty meters. This depending on the distance of of entrance and the building of course we have the turnstile mo uh, models i can also hook up to our uh, controllers to give access via via guard readers or put it always open for guests this is a little video of a, of a test how it works how durable they are Okay. This is the wiring, for example, for, for this um, access control device with face recognition. 
Okay, there is place for a card reader that we can see here in the pictures. Different models, uh, models for left and right or just for one um, passage. We have another one style that, that you can see also in our, obviously in our web page. The wiring. The extra accessories that you can use to, to block. And for the part, uh, the, for the cards, we have also personalization services. So if you want to have your logo printed on the white card, then we can uh, provide you these services. So up till now, this is the slideshow. I, um, of the presentation of the, of the of the products, so I would love to continue with um, the sphere access control lessons. Okay, let let us go go over it. <clears throat> so the first lesson, I, I I think there's not really anything to explain in here. Where I will explain how to install it. Uh, oh, one, one short comment. Depending on the situation, your port might be uh, occupied, so that you need to change the port in a different port. But I think everybody already um, had that experience. Okay, let's go into um, lesson two. There's something that I want to point out. Uh, in general, we always say, hey, use the uh, SADP tool to activate devices. but you know that there's also a possibility to activate the device into the Safir control center itself. And then uh, what you do is you you click on on the devices, and you will see here uh, um, the devices below. This one, for example, is inactive. You click on activate, and you follow the process just like you do in uh, the Safir control center. Also, uh, for other users or end users especially end users they used to forget their passwords a lot so do not forget to set the secret questions okay and when there is the option enter the email address as well the best way depending on the wishes of the client enter your your own company email address if the end user agrees with it because they are the ones that are losing the password. In this case, if you want to recover your password, you send it to the dedicated email address with uh, the XML or the QR code, and you will receive a, um, a password recovery file within five minutes. But that's not the email address of uh, support but the special email address that is used um, showing in the program. Okay, let's continue uh, to the number three, lesson number three. Okay, this is um, could be very useful, especially when, when you're um, having multiple uh, buildings or multiple zones in the building you can create groups. So what can you do with the groups? You can add in the group several devices. Imagine you have in on your laptop um, different clients. Okay, and one client you can, for one client you can create a group. In, in this group you can add uh, several recorders, like uh, for example, client A. Client A has uh, four locations. In all those four locations, they have um, recorders, access control devices. So everything you can create in one group. This makes your job a lot of way a lot easier. So in in this lesson, I will explain as well how to uh, import um, the various devices like channels, alarm inputs, zones, access points, and uh, alarm outputs, and uh, even the radar that we have. Okay, in lesson four, um, we show how to um, 
create uh, the people that needs to have access. Okay. I always maintain the rule, go from left to right and from top to bottom. In this order, most likely you will not miss a thing because there are a lot of steps you need to follow before you have a person um, in your device. So first of all, we go um, open the, the Safi Control Center. We go to Access Control, and then we have we click on the on the Persons button. Okay. Then in here you can create uh, one company or more than one company, like I showed you here. Oh, by the way, um, if this is too small for you, you can do uh, right uh, mouse click, and then you open the image in a new tab and then you have it full screen. So when we are in a group or a company or a, for in this case, I um, took a sample of the head office and in the head office there we have a person. So we click on add and then we enter here the, the name. In this case, it's, it's support. Okay, the, um, the rest you can use but it's not mandatory to uh, to use. Let's let's continue. Um, let me go backwards because I think we missed out of some important stuff. Okay. So in this case, uh, what I was explaining um, before is uh, when we have the Safir Control Center open and we want to add a person into a company, we go to the to the main screen and then we click on Access Control and then Person. We can at different companies in in your database and then when we have selected one company or in this case the head office we click on add and we add a person we give uh, we, you can change the id i would say okay just leave the id for for what it is and create a name the rest of the um, details are optional you can add an email address or telephone number. In case of a residence area <clears throat> or building, it's very useful to have the email and, and phone number in case of. So when you have created a person, you can always uh, edit it later on by selecting the person and then click on edit. Later on, I will give you a live demonstration as well. So then we have here the, uh, the person that you want to edit. And here I'm, I'm showing how to enter a card. So you click on the big plus, then a new fencer will pop up. And then you can have the option to read from a reader that is attached to your computer, or you can use the, the, the access control device reader to read the card number. The same thing is uh, for if you want to add a face or you want to um, add a fingerprint. Okay, in this case, you, uh, you, you will select the settings here, and then you select a card reader, and then below at point seven, you select the device where you want, which one you want to use to read the card. Okay, then you press on read and then depending on the device, if it was a monitor, it will show you that you can add the card. And then, <clears throat> obviously, here's the start. Okay, let me see. And this, um, <clears throat> we, we can give uh, some extra options for the access uh, control. We can create a, uh, a pin code for this uh, for this user. We can say it's a su uh, it's a super user or um, or um, extend the door time open or add to the block list. So, for example, if uh, if a person leaves the company, you can add this to the to the blacklist. Like they don't have access anymore. You can mark it as a visitor. Once you mark it as a visitor, you can set the limited of time that they have access. Um, there's also a, an option to create custom field information. 
and you can have a maximum of five fields. Um, for example, if you need to have additional information from the the workers or from the resident people that could be relevant, you can create a, a personal field for that one. Uh, later in here, we um, can see the um, the fields that we created. So I created here five ones, custom name one, name two. Well, obviously, you can add any uh, name you would like. And then I would, um, and then you have the option to enter um, <clears throat> the information that you need to have. This resident information, this is um, needed when you are using the intercom system but this is in an, in a different video that i already uh, published you can use the link here below <coughs> and it will show you uh, <coughs> the video intercom uh, training uh, <coughs> here in the last tab for the additional information you can enter card details from people in some cases um, you're able to uh, use the public transport card to give access on the on the card readers be aware of <clears throat> that you test first or get to know what is the um the uh type of card that is being used for the public transport or maybe you have an insurance card or you have the the doctor's card or um, some other card that has the option for uh, rfid Make use of time templates in Safir. Okay, Safir Control Center. So the time templates are mandatory. Okay. Um, by default, there are an all day and an all day denied template already there for you. In this case, I made a sample of um, a uh, eight to 530 template that people have access so this is a weekly schedule you can enter um, in here uh, or if you want to have uh, a different one let's say we have for cleaning people access and they need to start at six o'clock in the morning until uh, eight o'clock so you can create a uh, time template for cleaners or if you have a template for executive people that need to have access all time to the building you create one for the executive people in the company so add a new template okay this is how you can do it you go to the to the access control um, area of, of Sophia control center so before we created a person now we go to the right to have the access control and when you have the access control open you go to template and then uh, you can add a new template. You can, when uh, when you're adding a new template, you can create the, the name. And also you can put some marks here why you created it and some extra additional information that is necessary. So in here, you can select the time. You just uh, click and drag. Yeah, and then you can also edit to make it more precise. And then in step eight, you can copy that to the rest of the week to make your life a little bit easier. Also, you have the option of holiday templates. In case of uh, a company closed down completely in a holiday season, um, in some sectors, they, they close during holiday seasons. So you can use that so that nobody has access to the building. This is our, the same steps as before. Authorization and access groups in Sophie Control Center. Before getting access, you need to create an access group. 
So how, where we do where do we do that? Uh, we are still in in the tab access control. Then we have authoriz authorization, and then we have the access group. Okay, we click on add, and we see here on top we see the the the, the time template that we just discussed before. So you uh, select the time template. Obviously, also enter a name. Select a company, and I think here. There's some more. Let me open this one in a new tab, OK? It's a little bit bigger. So in here, you enter the name, your, your time template, when they have access. And then in here, you select the people. And, and it's possible to uh, select from more companies. So if, if one person, let's say UK, UK sales, for example, they have one card they want to use that for their residents and also for um, the head office uh, for the office in in germany or in, in 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 any other place city they can use you can select that for the different um, groups of devices so in here you have the sample below you can see, for example, these people, they all have access to door number one, but not door number two. They have, uh, this is from an intercom system, they have access for this one as well. So you select the devices for those people that have access on those doors or devices. And then obviously you click on save. Okay, up to now, all the things we have done is still inside your computer database. Nothing is just in your device. So be aware of that if you're going to test anything. So now we go to lesson number seven. Okay. In lesson number seven, we are going to upload all the information that we just created into the devices. That's okay. How, how do we do that? In the access group that we just created, we mark the access group. Let me go that in a in a different in a new window. I guess it shows up a little bit bigger, right? So in here we select the access group. We select apply to all devices. In some occasions, the, this might be taking some time, especially if the the bigger the database the bigger uh, the longer the time will be until everything is in the device in here you see also uh, an option to select the details and in the details you can see the process and you can see also the information that has been uploaded to that device okay like in this picture so sample uh, let me open this one in a new tab okay so in here we can see the uh, the information that has been uploaded. So you can select uh, sales in Germany, sales uh, Netherlands, and sales UK. And in this case, we selected uh, Germany. Okay, what we can see, we can see that is um, ID number four. So that comes with the um, with the user, and we uploaded this card number to that device that has the mark. Uh, door one on access control device 2206. Okay, in case of failure, like in this this image, <clears throat> so in here, uh, this is a sample of, of the video intercom, okay? Uh, the room number is invalid. So what do you do when you have a, a failure? Now in this case, it's the room number that is invalid. So you go back to, to the resident in, uh, information, you uh, bind the device to the uh, to the user. Then you select which door station it is and which room number it has. Okay. Um, even though if he's living in room number ten or the room number two hundred, if you put one one, it works. But uh, strong advice: put the correct number inside. And then you try again, and in this case, you will see that we succeed. Let's continue to number eight. 
advanced functions in Sophia Control Center. Okay. I'm, I'm not planning on discussing everything. I just want you to know that it's there in case uh, if in case you you need it or in case um, a client has special wishes for for these type of options. Okay, um, we we can um, enter the device parameters as as shown here. This could be very, uh, this could be useful usable, especially if you are uh, saying, hey, the doors cannot be open for longer than uh, 30 seconds, and in, or in this time is a minimum accord uh, swipe interval, like uh, like also the maximum fails attempts, like if, if somebody tries to scan a card uh, five times, and there needs to be alarm, you can edit this. And then also the the LEDs for uh, the readers. If the um, if the polarity should be changed, you can edit that in here. Alarm output. And here, like I discussed before, how long should be open and close the door in case of alarms. Multi-factor authentication, authentication. Sorry, you can add that here. Custom vegan. So if you're not using uh, the standard ones, the 26 and the 34 that uh, we are selling, and you have your own or the the client has special wishes, then you can um, change the uh, the settings in here as well. Same thing for authentication. Elevator configuration. We have two elevator controllers in our um, in our shop. Let me show you one. For example, if if this um, big building or residence uh, building, and certain people have access to only certain floors, you can use the card and the controller to call the elevator. And also the other controller, this, this one, you can place inside the uh, elevator to use, I think this is up to 16 buttons. Let me check, double check. Yeah, so this is for uh, for 16 buttons. So you can say, hey, this, this person, if he scans his card, he's got access to floor level 1, 3, 6, or 7, etc., etc. First person in, uh, also an option that might be used or not, depending on the situation, of course. Anti-passback, uh, multi-door locking, uh, for example, in a bank uh, building, um, you have a, a, um, a, a the, the first door and the second door. Those doors cannot be opened at the same time. Then the authentication code uh, and some other parameters you can change in the device. Okay, so what I have here open is Safir Control Center. Okay, let's go to the to the main main screen. Okay, uh, what we're we gonna do first? Okay, I want to first show you the lessons really quickly. Okay, so that you see also what is going on. Okay, great. So what I want to do? Okay, let's add a new person. Okay, so what I just did is from the main screen, I go to the first one, uh, add a person. So I click on add. Then the ID is five. I can change it, but I leave it like it is. Okay, so I call the person Bart Simpson. Okay. Then we want to add a card. So I need to select the device that I want to read the card from. I have two options, okay? I have the time attendance and I have the reader that's uh, on the controller. Be aware of that you select the right card for the right reader, okay? So let's use the one for the access control. 
I said OK. And then I press read. And now I hope that everything is working. And I have the card. OK. I add the card. What happens if you try to scan a card that you already added? Let's see that one. I press read. And I press add. OK, you see? It becomes red and you have the announcement that the card is already being added. So I press cancel. Okay. Um, the other information I can enter here, but let's just leave it like it is right now. And I go add. I just want to uh, go over it very quickly so that everybody can see how it works and how it needs to be set up. So I go back now to the main screen because we added one one person, Bart Simpson. I like him very much. So we go back to access control. Okay. And we have here the, the templates. We, you see that I don't have any holiday template. I don't have any other templates. So we're going to use the all day template. Then we go back down, go to access group. And here you see that I have already created a group. Okay, let's add another group. Okay. So, and this one, this guy is special. Okay. I select Bart only. He's so special, I give him only access to door number two. So, I need to create a name. I'm going to say door two. And then I go save. Okay, I'm still not there because the card is still not working. Uh, okay, so what I need to do is, you can see also the status. You see the previous one that's already applied. So now I need to select this one and apply to all devices. You will see here that is going to apply. This might take some time, depending on your on your network and and uh, the big how big the database is. Just uh, wait a little bit because in this case it takes a little bit time. I noticed that in the time attendance uh, devices it goes a little bit faster. Okay, let's let's go wait. For this one to happen let's go to to time attendance okay <clears throat> yes. okay something happens okay right um go to details you see here that every data is is applied and if i if i close this one and i will go to uh, monitoring i should see now that the door is working. So here we can see that the card that I just created is a, that unlocked the, the door for Bart. You see? And I also prepared some three other cards. You can see works very smoothly. This is the way you can uh, control it. Also, if you have an operator that is doing the operation and somebody or they received a call to open the door what you can do is like um, select door one and you can say hey unlock the door the door is then open for number one and if you want to have for two you can also open door number two in this case there are some other options as well to uh, remain unlocked or remain locked so in this case let me see And now this guy, he cannot open the door anymore because it remains locked. So um, to disable this, I click on this one. And now he's able to unlock the door again. Time attendance. Um, you need to be careful of complying all the actions okay 
even though you upload uh, the, the database into the device, you still need to um, apply the shift schedule. So in here, I, I already prepared something. Um, I hope within the coming week or two weeks, I uh, will have the lessons also ready on the same page, on the support page, how, how to set up this um, time attendance step by step. Okay, the basic rules that I already showed you um, is to create the persons, create, uh, upload, but for the reports, you need to uh, create a schedule. What you can do, you can create a department schedule <clears throat> that are for the whole organization and you can can save those kind of uh, settings then you can also uh, create a personal schedule um, before you do that you need to obviously make a shift first so you add here a shift a personal shift let's delete this one and let's call it shift one okay okay and now save now we go to shifts and then we are in personal schedule we select shift one and then we schedule from which date to which date um by the way if you uh forgot this it's um, backwards compatible. So that means if you're already running this device for one month and you try to create reports and you forgot to add the schedule, you can go back to uh, like December, okay? And then your end date, depending on the, what is the end date? You select that one, you click okay, and you use save. Oh, I forgot. Uh, to select the person for this schedule. I think this one is not inside the device. Okay. So now we have a personal schedule for those three people. And you can see that here in the calendar. We go back forwards, forwards, forwards. This down doesn't need to be uploaded to the device. This uh, whole calculation happens in, in Safir Control Center itself. So if, if we go back here to um, time attendance, and then we need to go to, let's first get the events from the device. That's important. Otherwise the computer cannot uh, calculate the data. So let's select from here till today, you can uh, manually add all the originals from devices. Well, I will add all. And you can also select the organization, and then you do get events. Then you select the devices, and then you wait until everything is synchronized. Depending on the amount of data, this might take some time. Okay. then we go to report and then we say daily report and let's see if I did everything correctly there should be some data I hope so okay we have five pages and you might see that I, not, I was not consisting with scanning the um, the cars. You see, for example, this one I did scan. And if if everything is is done correctly, you will see uh, you see everything being done correctly. Um, if for a testing environment, I would always suggest I uh, take one device, put it in your office and uh, be consistent when you enter the office um, to scan your card or your fingerprint so that you can have some actual real data to, to test with and to, to play with.
Okay, then uh, I would like to thank everybody and especially Sebastian on the chat. Unfortunately, I cannot use my webcam <laughs> at, at the moment for the for the webinar, but hopefully next time it will be uh, working uh, better. And um, everybody, uh, a nice day for uh, today. And again, thank you very much. Also, Sebastian, thank you very much for the chat. Okay, hope you have a nice day and uh, see you later. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to know more about our security products, subscribe to the Visio Tech channel and activate the notifications to always stay updated on the latest videos.